Hey folks, and welcome back to another Division 2 video. In this one, I'm going to be taking a closer look at how the optimization station will work when it gets added to the Division 2 with Title Update 12. Let's jump into it. So in the first wave of the Title Update 12 PTS, I spent quite a bit of time trying out and playing around with the optimization station, being pretty curious about how it would be implemented after the way they added it to the first game. So I thought in this video I'd gather up my massive notes and create a video with everything we currently know about the optimization station coming to the Division 2 with TU12. But remember, all of the information in this video has come from the TU12 public test server, so things may change before the release into the main game. The optimization station is a new feature coming to the Division 2 with the next big update, Title Update 12, that will allow players to use a new type of resource specifically used in optimization to increase attributes on their gear and weapons. You will be able to optimize any attribute on your weapon or a piece of gear, including the core attribute, as long as it hasn't already been recalibrated. You'll also be able to optimize multiple non-recalibrated attributes on one piece of gear, not just one attribute like with the recalibration station, which means we'll finally have a way to fully max out a piece of gear or a weapon with a completely different grind. The way the optimization station is going to work is by interacting with the same bench we use for recalibration. There, there'll be a new tab for optimization, which we can use to select a weapon type or gear slot. Then, just like with the recalibration bench, you pick the piece of gear or weapon you want to optimize, choose the attribute you want to optimize, and it's that simple. Once you start optimizing an attribute, it will be marked with the optimization sign and no longer will be able to be recalibrated. What you'll need to optimize your attributes is a collection of different resources being added with TU12 specifically for optimization. There's a lot of different types of these materials, as well as a lot of different ways you'll have to gather them. There are some materials that come from simply deconstructing gear and weapons. These are gear slot and weapon type resources. For example, if you're optimizing an assault rifle, you'll need the assault rifle alloy. Or if you want to optimize a chest piece, you'll need the chest weave resource. There are also faction specific resources that'll be dropped by the faction that match the resource you need. And then there are two activity specific resources. The SHD calibration, which is a resource that can only be gathered by completing projects and is also being added to summit caches, which are earned for completing summit challenges. It's great these are being added to projects because this will finally give players a reason to get a couple of projects done. And finally, there's field recon data, which is a resource that can only be gathered from control points, dark zone landmarks, and certain floors on the summit. Every time you optimize an attribute on a weapon or a piece of gear, you'll need four of these different types of resources. Everything we saw in the PTS uses the SHD calibration and field recon data, but the other two resources needed depends on the item the attribute you want to optimize is on. Remembering this information is from the public test server, so the numbers and resources may change. But from what we saw for weapons, as well as needing the SHD calibration and field recon data, they also need the resource for their own weapon type, such as shotgun resources to optimize a shotgun, as well as a certain faction type. Black Tusk resources for rifles and pistols, True Sons for assault rifles, Cleaners for marksman rifles, Rikers for shotguns, Hyenas for SMGs, and Outcast for LMGs. Gear works very much the same, needing SHD calibration and field recon data resources, as well as the resource type for that gear slot, for example, glove resources to optimize gloves. But like weapons, a faction resource is needed per gear slot. Hyena for mask, Black Tusk for chest, True Sons for the backpack, Cleaners for gloves, Rikers for holster, and Outcast for knee pads. I did notice the cost per optimization increased pretty steeply per optimization. To demonstrate this, I crafted a mid range FAMAS with a roll of 9% assault rifle damage. For the first optimization, it cost 28 AR resources, 19 field recon data, 8 True Suns resources, and 9 SHD calibration resources to go up to 9.6% from 9. The second optimization cost 111 AR resources, 63 field recon data, 30 true suns resources, 
and 26 SHD calibration resource to increase it to 10.9. The third optimization cost 166 AR resources, 88 field recon data, 46 True Suns resources, and 35 SHD calibration resource for an increase to 12.3%. The fourth optimization cost 229 AR resources, 117 field recon data, 66 True Suns resources, and 46 SHD calibration resource for an increase up to 13.6% assault rifle damage. And for the fifth and final optimization, it cost 300 AR resources, 150 field recon data. 90 True Suns resources and 60 SHD calibration resource to max out the assault rifle damage at 15%. So in total, it costs 734 AR resources, 587 field recon data, 240 True Suns resources, and 176 SHD calibration resource to increase an assault rifle from 9 to 15%. The cost of optimization has sparked a lot of conversation to whether this is too expensive in the community. Which, if I'm honest, I'm kind of on the fence about, because I don't want it to be too easy to gather these resources, otherwise it kills the grind of looking for gear. But at the same time, if it's too difficult to gather them, no one's going to do it. Looking at where we're going to gather these resources from, I believe in some areas it might be a little too expensive, but in others I think it's a pretty good balance. So for weapon and gear resources, I deconstructed 20 assault rifles and received 20 assault rifle optimization resources in return. Then repeated the same thing with a high-end chess piece and had the same results. So for items at the moment, it seems to be one resource per deconstructed item. For the faction resources, I found they were dropping similar to regular crafting resources, which seems to be quite random, but not too infrequent. I think these seem pretty fair and well balanced for the work you put in and what you receive. Trying out a few control points, I was receiving 4 field recon data for a level 4 control point or a heroic control point, which I don't think is too bad but could be maybe a little bit higher, say 5 or 6. The main problem I ran into was with the SHD calibration resource. This is the one at the time you could only gather through completing projects. The daily open world project gives you 1 SHD calibration and the weekly gives you 5 SHD calibration. There is also PvP projects that give you 1 for the daily and 5 for the weekly as well. Which means in one week, if you complete all of the projects that reward SHD calibration, both PvE and PvP projects, you can only receive 24 SHD calibration in total for a week. And since it took 176 SHD calibration to optimise an assault rifle from 9 to 15%, it could take months to optimise a build in full. But after a recent state of the game, it was mentioned that they're also looking to add SHD calibration resources to summit caches, which will be earned by completing the summit challenges. So this is another way to earn it, which is great. I think we could do with more of a constant way to farm SHD calibration, as well as the projects and summit caches. That would just mean if somebody was playing purely to optimise, they would have a little bit more to do and a bit more variety. Overall, I do think the resources needed to optimise are going to have to be very carefully balanced. Going too far either way could cause some issues. If it's too difficult for players to gather, some might just not bother farming them at all, which would make one of the main reasons to play in Grind Title Update 12 a little bit pointless. Or if they're too easy to gather, we could run into the same problem we've seen with the Division 1 and that game's optimization station, which was that you could easily farm and optimize a full build in a few hours. This meant that players didn't really feel the need to farm gear anymore, since you just needed some okay pieces and then optimize it to max. I suppose really the latter would be the better of the two outcomes, giving players a really good burst of fun and power to enjoy, rather than creating a long unrewarding grind. After spending some time with the optimization bench, I do dread it less than when it was first announced. As long as the grind and the resources are well balanced, I feel it might actually be quite a good addition to the game. Pushing players into some of the lesser played activities like projects. But I do feel really the optimization station should be the cherry on top of a build, used for those final tweaks, but not the only way to get a fully optimized build. 
If you have any questions about the optimization station, ask away in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And that's all for today. If you'd like to support the channel, make sure to subscribe for more Division 2 content and give this video a thumbs up. And in the description below, you'll find a link to a Twitch channel where I'm one part of a stream duo with my better half Cooks. We play a lot of the Division 2 through the week and random horror games on Saturday. It's always a good laugh. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.